In this lesson, you'll learn how to access and use internal storage from your Android apps. And these are files stored in the device's built-in memory. And we're going to look at the code to do this in an API demo. In the API demos worksheet in line 91, there's a demo read asset in the content primary group, asset secondary group. It has a Java file name of read asset. So let's fire it up in the emulator. We'll click on content, assets, and read asset. And we see the text that explains that the text was read from a raw asset and placed in a text view. So let's open the code in Eclipse. In the content source folder, we'll open read asset. And line 34 defines our read asset activity. Line 43 uses the set content view method with the read asset layout to initialize our display. So let's take a look at that layout. It's a simple linear layout with a text view that has an ID of text, and that holds the text that we read from our file and displays it on our screen. Back in our Java source, Line 48 defines a try method that's coupled with the catch method in line 67 to detect file errors. Line 49 creates an input stream object using the open and get assets methods. And get assets returns an asset manager, which provides access to an application's raw asset files. And this uses a lower level API that allows you to open and read raw files that have been bundled with your application. And the open method uses the file name readasset.txt. So if we look in the assets folder, we see our readasset.txt file. Back in the source code, line 54 uses the available method to determine the size of the estimated number of bytes that can be read or skipped without blocking for more input. Line 57 creates a buffer for the data using the size variable. Line 58 reads the data into the buffer. Now for larger files, this read process might need to be more complex, reading through multiple blocks until the end of the data is reached. This is just a simple example of reading a small file. 59 closes the file. Line 65 retrieves the text view from the layout. Line 66 places the text we read into that field in the layout. So that's an example of reading an internal file. To see the code to write an internal file, go to the storage options page on the developer's website, shown here. And here, it shows a simple few lines of code to write a file. The first line uses the file output stream class to create a file output stream object and open the file using the open file output method. The second line uses the write method to write the file. The get bytes method retrieves the bytes to be written. The third line closes the file. And there's some additional useful detail also included on the web page. So that's our lesson on internal files. Let's move on to see how to handle external files.